from the studios of Warren Tech North, Jeffco Public Schools presents Building Bright Futures, a Jeffco podcast with Superintendent Dan McMinnemy. Hello, I'm Dan McMinnemy, Superintendent of Jeffco Schools. Welcome to our first ever Building Bright Futures podcast. In these podcasts, we will be doing a wide range of topics beginning today with guardian caps being used in all of our schools this fall. I'm here today with Jim Thiefault, our Jeffco Schools District Athletic Director. Jim, I know our athletic season is in full swing and we're grateful that you could join us today. We've seen the helmets, some have wondered what it's all about, and today you're here to tell us. Thanks for being here. You bet. Happy to be here and happy to, to uh, get people more information and more informed on, on what the Guardian Cap's all about. So, Jim, this fall, Jeffco football teams will wear Guardian Caps during our football practice. Can you tell us what Guardian Caps are and how they work? The Guardian Cap is an outer shell worn on the uh, football helmet that is padded. And really, the whole design is to just help reduce some of the impact that a player might take uh, as they hit helmet to helmet or shoulder pad to helmet. It's just to reduce the impact. So concussions are a hot topic in professional sports and are about to get hotter. Will Guardian Caps prevent concussions? Nothing prevents concussions. And, and there isn't anything showing, uh, uh, there isn't any test that show any of our equipment will prevent concussions. What we hope to do with the Guardian Cap is, again, reduce the amount of impact that a player might incur during practice and the repetitive hitting that goes on during practice, that it just eliminates some of the impact that they're going to realize. So the science behind this is really not the one-time hit, the big hit that we see on television that the announcers keep going back to, but it's really the repetitive nature of the constant hitting of the helmets that the Guardian Cap really acts as a buffer in between those two helmets. That's really what the technology is about, correct? That's correct. And and you're right. Um, we we watch ESPN and Sports Center, and, and of course they want to show the big hit all the time, and boy, that's the one that must be causing the concussion. And And sometimes that is true, but most concussions occur during practice. So why don't kids wear these uh, guardian caps during the games? I mean, they're using them during practice, and uh, you know we've been using them for about two weeks. I'm really interested in looking at the data, but why aren't we using them during games as well? Well, the reason we don't use them during games at this point is because we go by the National Federation of High School, NFHS, uh, by their rules. National Federation are the ones that that put all the rules together for all of our sports that we that we have to follow. And through the NFHS, what they require is that the certified equipment must be worn uh, at all times during contest. And if one team is wearing it and the other team's not, then, then that's not a good thing. And so since we are the only district right now in the state of Colorado wearing the Guardian cap, we're not going to be wearing them during the games because the others aren't. And it's not a required piece of equipment like a football helmet might be. A football helmet's required, so everybody wears one. Uh, Guardian caps are not required at this point. More with Jim after a break. The Arvada West High Marching Band is always a hit on football fields and in competitions. But before these young musicians, all decked out in their purple and white, can show what they're made of, they have to put in their reps here at the Arvada West High School practice field, where they spend hours practicing, choreographing, and bonding, all under the direction of Craig Melhorn, Director of Instrumental Music. Looks like Rylan and James, you're the low part of that arc. I don't think about the trophies or the wins or anything like that, but I really try to teach the education of music and music education, what it means to be part of the marching band. Watch the full story now on JPS TV, Jeffco's official YouTube channel, a place where you can discover your district. Last time! Jeffco Public Schools, Building Bright Futures. 
So, Jim, this isn't the first time that Jeffco has used Guardian Caps. I remember a few years back, uh, Andy Lowry, the head coach at Columbine High School, Mm -hmm. had a select group of students that were using that, and they got a little press in the Denver Post. But um, since that time, we decided to come back and loop back and have a discussion with Guardian Cap. And really, it was through Andy Lowry's efforts and meeting that we had last spring where we first started discussing this. Why are we back now talking about Guardian Caps? Well, I think Guardian Cap has, has given us a lot of information that we didn't have at that time. And, and you know, to pro- provide a little bit of that history, Andy was using them. And then there was all of a sudden the statements coming out from the helmet manufacturers that claimed by wearing a third-party product on, on a helmet, then you were decertifying the helmet. Our helmets are certified each and every year. Uh, they were saying it would decertify the helmet. So we asked Andy to to hold off on using the product. He was very high on it, thought it really did good things for his, the kids during practice. And <clears throat> But we asked him to hold off while we looked into it. And it really took us about a year and a half to uh, to, to do the research that, that we wanted to, to do to find out, is this the right thing to do for kids? And over the course of that time, Guardian Cap has had – numerous helmets tested with the guardian cap on with the guardian cap off that's where they find out 33 percent reduction in the force uh, to the helmet uh, through the drop tests that were done um, and in the one piece that i noticed over that period of time they would keep me updated is the increasing number of schools especially at the college level who were using the product and it started off with a Clemson in a, in a South Carolina. And you feel like, you know, if this is a product that really isn't going to be worth using, that probably after a year or two, a place like a Clemson or South Carolina would stop using it. And that's not happened. They continue to use it. It's grown into 30 major colleges and, and universities that are now using the product, numerous high schools. I think I think Guardian Cap puts out uh, in their information 40,000 of these caps are being worn pretty much on a daily basis across the country. Um, However, we are the first large school district to step up and partner with Guardian Cap and say, hey, let's do a pilot program. And I think that was a difference we heard last spring when we met with Andy and with uh, the owner of Guardian Cap and we had Mm -hmm. the... uh, the brain surgeon in yep. there talking with us as well. I think the difference was is there are isolated schools that are using it. There's schools in Texas and California, um, but there never has been a district-wide initiative to do this. And I think that's one of the things we talked about was, um, you know, if we're going to do this, we're not. If we think it's the right thing to do, let's do it with all of our schools and let's collect the data this year and see how that is. So we worked with Guardian Cap, and we're thankful that they wanted to work with us mm-hmm. to try to put a district-wide initiative. So how many schools in our district are using Guardian Caps? We have 18 high schools that that have football and uh, nearly 1,800 student athletes uh, playing football uh, this fall. And we have every one of those uh, kids outfitted in a guardian cap. And they are to use them for every practice. Um, the only time we allow them to not have them on in practice time is the day before a game most most programs will do just a walkthrough. And so if they're just doing a walkthrough practice, um, then they don't have to be wearing them. But uh, other than that, they're wearing them all the time. And, and I've, I've been around to some of our schools, and, and there's been buy-in, and the coaches have, have followed what we've, what we've asked them to do, and they've been supportive. And I think in the end they're finding out that this is a good thing. So, and one, this is just one more step in trying to keep our student athletes safe. I mean, at every school, we have a certified athletic trainer. Um, through that, we've been able to collect data over the years, I'm assuming, mm-hmm. regarding concussions during practice and games. And I think it'll be really interesting to see the data as we move forward. Are there some early thoughts that you have about the, the advocacy for this program, things that you've heard as you've been out there hearing athletes talk and hearing coaches talk about this? Well, we're still we're still pretty young. I mean, I, I have heard we've had a couple of schools that there's still some concussions happening, and but we kn- we knew this product wasn't going to prevent concussions. Um, we're hoping that it helps to do that. And you're right, we're going to be tracking the numbers throughout the year. Um, our trainer network through Panorama Orthopedic um, keeps uh, keeps good data on that. We now have through Guardian Cap someone from. Uh, 
University of Massachusetts, UMass, uh, who's been involved with the Guardian Cap for four years, um, working real close with our trainer network in, in helping to uh, accumulate that data. Well, Jim, this is really great stuff. I really appreciate you being here today, and I appreciate you and Steve Bell and Andy Lowry stepping out there and saying, what can we do to make this more uh, positive for our students and safe for our students? And we really appreciate. And that wraps up our first Building Bright Futures podcast. Look for us on the webpage and stay tuned for our next podcast as we keep you up to speed about the top issues in Jeffco schools. I'm Superintendent Dan McMinnemy. Thank you for joining us. You've been listening to Building Bright Futures, a Jeffco podcast with Superintendent Dan McMinnemy. This is a production of Jeffco Public Schools.